protection product. At the age of 12, Jesus was lost. Have you ever lost a child, whether it was 12 or younger? If Mary was here in Canada, the social services would have come in and taken the child and they would have said, you know, your parents are incompetent. You can't even take care of your child. They don't even know where he was and it was for three days. The Holy Family, incompetent, and they are put as a model to us. I have walked with people who have their children taken away by social services. And I think of all the people out there who have either lost a son or a daughter, lost through accident, through suicide, through whatever reason. And that anguish and that pain that each of these mothers feel, that was represented by Jesus when he took the bread and he blessed it and broke it and puts it on the altar. That is what every priest does when he offers the bread in memory of Jesus. We think of every time a young child was born, every time a child has been aborted. We think of every young son and daughter that has been lost at some time or the other. Jesus is offering each one of them here at the altar. A few years ago, I had to bury a young man. He was barely 23 years old. Some of the parishioners told me, Father, when you go to the funeral parlor, you will meet his dad, who is a very important person in the government. He's a man of power. He's a CEO. He knows how to move things. Actually, when I went there, I found a broken man who was crying for a son. And he told me, he says, Father, the whole thing seems wrong. I should be buried by my son, not me bearing my own son over here. What is offered on the altar is the brokenness of this father. What is offered on the altar is the brokenness of every man, woman and child who has died. And I think about Afghanistan and so many of our young men and women have died over there. You and I might disagree about the reasons about going to Afghanistan, but our hearts still go out. And we think about Jesus lost in the temple, and we think about the mothers and fathers who have lost all these children in this world which seems so senseless. In the year 2004, four of our young Canadians were also killed in a friendly fire in Afghanistan. I didn't know their names, but I cried because they were ours. They were the ones that were represented when Jesus took the bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it up on the altar. 
And then I think about my own companions. I studied with them and I've lost five of them. They were lost precisely because they were doing what Jesus said, do in memory of me. They took the bread, they broke it, and they left it on the altar. People came up to them and shot them, some in the head and some in the back. If anybody were to kill me here in Canada, it's not because of my faith, I'm pretty safe. It would be some crazy person that would kill me. And then our Holy Father went to India and he spoke about the conversion of mind and heart. Beautiful words for us Catholic, but politically it was incorrect. The moment he said that, so many of my companions were killed. The bishop had to go to one mother and said, your son has been beheaded. We have found the body, but we do not find, we haven't found the head. This is the brokenness that Jesus represents. This is the brokenness of the mother who had to bury her son, and she did not know even what his face looked like at that moment. This is the brokenness that is offered here up on the altar. It's a brokenness of you and the brokenness of me that Jesus offers up on the altar. When he takes the bread, he blesses it and breaks it. When it was noon, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. As Mary stood at the foot of the cross, she symbolized the brokenness of every man, woman, and child that we symbolize as we celebrate the Eucharist. Here is my beloved son. How many of us, we find our sons and daughters hurting, the sons and daughters needing a transplant of some sort or the other. We are totally helpless. We can't do anything. And that is the brokenness that Jesus expresses when he takes the bread, he blesses it and breaks it. One of my friends needed a bone transplant and his brother who was a CEO and a big shot in his company did not even think twice. He stopped his company, he went down to give his bone marrow transplant. After all, he's my brother. Mary, as she stood in, at the foot of the cross, did not have that luxury. She would have loved to have taken Jesus' place, but she was so helpless. That was the brokenness that Jesus realized on Holy Thursday, and now it's being brought to its fulfillment on Good Friday. This is the brokenness we remember as Mary stood at the foot of the altar. I can't do a thing. And so we go on as we remember the brokenness in our own lives. It is for the children, it is for all of us as we celebrate this Eucharist that we realize that this brokenness is a brokenness of our very hearts. And I think about the brokenness of many of you who have been married for 60, 70 years old and a spouse dies. And there's an emptiness, the whole, nothing can ever take that place. We think, okay, time will solve it. It does not. I remember when my father died at the age of 94 on the 21st of March in the year 2001. And he lived a full life and I praised and thanked God, but I hadn't a clue of the emptiness in my mother's life. I thank God, none of us, we are seven sons, none of us could imagine what it was all about. Thank God I have cousins who are girls and they would take my mother out for a dinner, for a movie, we would take her out and they would speak with her and share with her the brokenness that she has felt. Then my mother got her life together, not that she didn't always have it, but she was off to Costa Rica, she was off to India, she was off doing so many things and I would say, Mom, give me your secretary's name so I can make an appointment to come and see you. 
But each anniversary, each celebration of my dad's birthday, each time we celebrate any birthdays, there is an emptiness over there, a brokenness over there. And Jesus realized that this was the same brokenness that his own mother must have felt at the foot of the cross.